roll was a lifelong dream, but it had to end. And as the lights went down on my career, I decided to follow my heart and set out on a journey to explore different cultures and ways of living. Down there, a new world opened itself up to me. A world of new faces, places, and foods. Around every corner, a new experience. My name is Nick Payne. I am a culinary archaeologist, traveling alone on a lifelong journey to preserve the world's ancient recipes. I discovered that many customs, including foods used by the natives, were disappearing every day. Saving these for future generations became my mission, and now I bring you some of the world's most exotic culinary traditions. Hello, America. My name is Lydia. Welcome in Greece. Nick will show you our fantastic food in my country. Come and see us. It's approximately 7 o'clock and I am in the Greek countryside heading toward the ancient city called Edessa which I hear is really beautiful and if I'm real lucky try to get someone to cook for me. Edessa has had a tumultuous past. It is the only town of ancient Macedonia with a continuous and unbroken history of over 2,800 years. After a seven hour drive north from Athens, I arrived at one of the region's best restaurants. Uh, hello, my name is Anastasia. We are in Edessa. This is our tavern, Zingas Yorgos. We have today chicken, kotopolo, gyro, gyro. Chicken again, kotelet, steak, Brizola and um, Kondosuvli. Tomorrow we have also cheap head and kebab. This is the owner, Zingas Yorgos. I found this most interesting. Rotisseries require perfect red coals. Mikey uses a unique Macedonian innovation. Two hair dryers accelerate the coals, allowing busy chefs to quickly and efficiently obtain an even heat. This taverna prepares over 50 chickens and more than 300 pounds of specialty meats every day. As with all chefs in Macedonia, he uses a blowtorch to burn off any remaining hairs disinfect the outer surface of the chicken, and most importantly, tighten the skin. Chef Mikey has worked at this taverna for more than 20 years, and grew up only a few blocks away. After serving in the Greek army, he returned to Edessa to relearn his grandfather's recipes, and begin a new life as a fourth generation family chef. It was my honor to observe his special techniques learned from many years of trial and error. The reason why he's putting salt in the, in the chicken is because to keep the juice and the safe flavor inside. And above a little pepper. Red pepper. Red pepper, yes. And that's it. And that's it. It goes back to the beginning of time, roasting meat over the fire. The chickens will slowly roast for several hours. The juices that drip off will ignite on the coals below and the smoke created will flavor the meat. A Greek meal is a communal affair. Many different types of food are placed on plates and everybody shares. Here we have roasted peppers and olive oil, feta cheese and tzatziki sauce made of yogurt and cucumbers, and various salads. The meats will be served later. This is paprika. Pepper, uh, it's, how, is it, how is it prepared? Tomato sauce, uh, salt and pepper, tomato sauce, and two hours. 
although first cultivated in South America, it is hard to imagine any Greek serving a meal without their beloved tomatoes, peppers, and onions. During my visit, Anastasia taught me many things about Greek food. Having learned about this changing modern cuisine, I now needed to explore the ruins to better understand the culinary history of Greece. I am now in Edessa. Edessa was one of the most significant towns in ancient Macedonia, the land of Alexander the Great. Edessa, the word Edessa, means town on water. And this is the beginning of that water, the magnificent waterfalls of Edessa. The town of Edessa is almost completely surrounded by water and almost inaccessible to the enemy because of its lake. It is also defended by very high walls and very strong towers. Behind those magnificent waterfalls is literally a labyrinth of caves, stalactites, stalagmites. This, this particular cave was the site of many ancient rituals during ancient times. It also provided the townspeople with a place to hide when the fortification walls of the city had failed to keep back invading armies. Ancient Edessa developed on two levels. The Acropolis, or Upper Town, which is called Acropolis, means town on the rocks, and the Lower Town of Logos, which is where the ancient city is located, down below the fall. The walls, the fortification walls behind me, completely surrounded the city and had towers protected both the upper city, where the waterfalls were, and the lower city, the city of Logos. Let's take a look at what there is here. Right outside of this house is the remains of a really huge jar. It's made of terracotta. It's probably about three feet across. From what I was told, a man would come along and fill these jars with water outside of the residences uh, for a small price. And then the, um, the inhabitants would come and put their jugs into the large jar, get the water that they need, and bring it into the house. This jar was broken, but is still embedded in the dirt down here in front of the house. I want to show you something I found here in the ruins. It was probably uh, drawn by a draftsman or the person building some of the temples here from the 3rd century BC. It is a circle with lines drawn through it and that is the positioning, the exact positioning, of a marble column. These tiles were used in the, uh, on the roofs of houses. They were also used to pave uh, floors of houses and also the streets. They are literally everywhere here. If you look over here, here's a fine example of a typical ancient tile. Check it out. Right here is that exact type of terracotta tile that was used for the sidewalks and unimportant areas of the city. Beyond the terracotta, the marble was used for the flooring of the houses and other important sites such as temples. These walls were fortified, torn down, and rebuilt many, many times. You can see an ancient design on this piece of pottery. The Macedonians were experts in the art of war. They conquered many cities all over Greece. And because of their expertise, they built amazing walls, one of the best in antiquity, to protect their city. There were fortification towers every 50 feet here, protecting the city of Logos from invaders. 
Edessa now enjoys a peaceful existence. Throughout the Macedonian kingdom, the royal seal of Alexander the Great, a golden 16-pointed sun, can be seen everywhere. Having beheld the history of this area, I wanted to experience a truly unique local dish. The next morning, I would return to Yorgos Taverna to have them prepare the head of a goat. This is the uh, butcher shop where I just got my, my uh, goat head. The butchers did not allow me to videotape the killing of the animal and the cleaning of the goat head that I have. But it's a good thing because it's not something I think you'd want to see and I don't want to see again. I have the clean version in the trunk in a sack and I'm going to take that to the taverna and they're going to cook it a special way. And then as your host the, of the Exotic Kitchen, it's my job to eat those things. To show you that uh, people around the world eat many different things uh, that are unusual for us but very normal for them. So we're going to go to the taverna and see how he prepares the goat head in the trunk. I finally made it to Yorgos Taverna. We have uh, the goat head being cleaned in the sink in front of me and next to it is a container of intestines that will be washed and wrapped around some meat in a dish called kokoretsi. The uh, kokoretsi is made from the heart, liver, lungs and spleen of a goat or a sheep but a very young one from ages one month to six months only when they're uh, suckling milk at the time when the goat or sheep begins to eat grass and grain that's not good because it uh, it contaminates the insides and makes the insides smell so the the uh, the intestines only basically contain milk because the animal is so young. Now what he's doing here is he's thoroughly cleaning the, the goat head of all debris and dirt, the jaw, the inside, all of the meat has to be thoroughly washed and clean. While Mikey continues to prepare the goat head and the kokoretsi, Yorgos watches the counter, serving dishes to the passing customers as needed. Here he serves up a delicious plate of lamb shawarma. Over here we have the big bucket of intestines. And what he's doing right now is he's uh, taking each intestine, which is about 20, maybe 30 feet long, and putting a little bit of water inside of it like a balloon and that water serves to push all the waste products completely out of the intestines so that's how you clean them and what he's done is he's taken groups of um, uh, looks like about 10 at a time and then tied a knot at the end once he's done like 10 long long intestines and that knot helps to tie the string of the first 10 or so together and now he's, he's starting on a second batch right now. The cleaned intestines will marinate in salt, pepper and lemon juice overnight. Next, the various meats used in kokoretsi are cut up and placed in the sink to be cleaned. Once rinsed off, they are placed in a bucket for the marinade. Mikey uses a large amount of salt. Like many Middle Eastern countries, extreme amounts of salt are used in marinades. Next, Mikey adds regular black pepper, common throughout the world. Next, oregano, and finally lemon. Lots of lemon juice. Mikey told me that the acid from the lemon 
helps remove the strong taste from the organ meats used in this dish. Traditionally, this dish is only eaten at Easter, but today they have made it especially for my viewing audience. After being mixed by hand, the meats will join the intestines in the refrigerator to marinate overnight. From the stomach, uh, yes, on the front. From oh, the front. front part. Yes. Front part of the stomach. Yes. And why does he use that? Provide flavor. Yes, uh, to keep the uh, cocorazzi uh, sauce. Uh, not uh, hot, but how cold is it? Keep it um, juicy? Juicy. Ah. Yes. Keep it juicy. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Oh, this is the heart. We put that first. That's the heart. Uh -huh. Yes. Why do you put it on the bottom? We put it on the bottom. Yes. So that it's in the heart. He keeps it uh, steady. Uh, st steady. Oh, you mean the, 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 same, the same order? Yes. So heart. Heart. Liver. Liver. Lung. Lung. Yes. And a little bit. And uh, spleen. Spleen. Same order. Yes. Heart. Liver. After the meats are placed on the skewer, Mikey then wraps the whole thing in stomach lining. This will hold all of the juices inside as it slowly cooks on the grill. Next, the intestines, which have been marinating for 24 hours, are wrapped around the meats. This is the final element of cocorezzi and will hold the dish together as it cooks. This has got to be the fastest uh, wrapping of intestines on cocorezzi I've ever seen. Uh, last time I was in Greece, it was done by hand one at a time, but Mikey has uh, a crank and he turns it very quickly and wraps it like string. I can't believe it's so fast. What the cook is waiting for right now, before he puts the cocorezzi on the fire, is for all of the, uh, the charcoal to uh, turn red. Instead of some black and some red, it must all be red. Therefore, there's no charcoal smell on the, fi on the, uh, on the food. The cocorezzi is a traditional Greek food. It's a favorite uh, dish and it takes two or three hours to cook. cooking for, for three hours now. It's ready for eat, uh, to eat and the sheep head will take a little longer.
What amazed me about the kokoretsi was that the intestines had become dark and very crispy after many hours of barbecue. Forming a protective shell of sorts, the caramelized intestines have held the juices inside in addition to protecting the internal meats from burning. Hot from the grill, the kokoretsi is served with an onion and parsley salad and french fries. You know, if you've eaten liver, if you can tolerate liver, kokoretsi is pretty close to that. Isn't it a beautiful plate? Super! I want to thank Anastasia. Yes, thank you very much. And Yorgos, fantastic cook. And Mikey. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Dimitri, they've been very helpful. Forget about Athens, forget about the big cities, come to the country. Bye bye. 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 Yasus, Yasus. Yasus, Yasus.